Wisteria 2909 back for another episode of Reading the Wrong Way. So we're back again to explore yet another set of Alice spin-offs. Before I begin, I stated in my last video we'd be tackling two countries today, but once I received the Country of Diamond books, I realized that there's a lot more reading than I initially thought. I don't feel right giving a review just by skimming, so hopefully we'll tackle Diamond in my December video. For now, we're going to dive into the Country of Joker. Once again, I need to explain a few things before we get too far. If you haven't read the original series, this series, perhaps more than any of the others, does an amazing job at recounting what happened in the original. Most of the first volume of Circus and Liars game is Alice recalling her experiences in Hearts, which may bore people that did read the original. This essentially sets you up for the rest of the plot. Now, while I explained the moves last time, this series tends to muddle things up a little bit. Remember that I have not played any of the games or read the fan book yet, so this is solely from my reading the spin-offs in this country. The events in Country of Joker take place after Alice has been to both Hearts and Clover. Alice is close to the inhabitants, but hasn't fallen in love with any of them. Joker is the role leader that appears during April season. April season is the only period where Wonderland experiences seasons, but only one season in each territory. Spring at Heart Castle, Summer at the Amusement Park, Autumn at Hatter Mansion, and Winter at the Tower of Clover. We'll get deeper into April season as we get into the individual spin-offs, so let's get started. Like last time, all the series I'm going to show you are rated OT for older teens, generally considered 16+, plus, which I think is appropriate. If you'd like a breakdown of my rating explanation, please refer to my September video in the Country of Hearts. This series contains a total of 7 volumes so far between two series. The final volume of Circus and Liars game will be released February 10th of next year, and Nightmare Trilogy Volume 2 will be out December 2nd of this year, and the final volume released in March 24th of next year. There aren't any other spin-offs of the series that I know of. We're going to start off with Circus and Liars game, which will have seven volumes total, with six currently released right now. It's April season in Wonderland, where seasons can be enjoyed throughout the territories and the circus has come to town. Led by the mysterious Joker, the circus seems to be a place of fun where one could enjoy themselves. But even the role holders, including Nightmare and Peter, who seem to know more than anyone else about Alice, are on edge with Joker's presence. Ringleader of the circus, Joker takes pride in providing entertainment and magic for people that visit him, but there's more to him in the circus than meets the eye. Every card has two sides, and Joker's no different. Somewhere within Wonderland lurks another Joker that is more direct and cruel than the one running the circus. He's a jailer despised by many, but not all of the inhabitants. Alice must uncover the mystery surrounding April season while choosing between her old world and the feelings she's developing in Wonderland. This series really sets the foundation for how things work during April season. At first, all of the seasons in the separate territories are unstable, allowing Alice to pass freely between the territories. However, once the seasons become stable, the only way to go between the different territories is to visit Joker at the circus and beat him in a card game. He'll then change the season so the winner can travel to whichever territory they choose. This must be done anytime Alice wants to travel, and it only applies to her because she's an outsider. Wall holders and faceless can pass freely amongst the territories, at the risk of their own lives, of course. We also get to experience common holidays in each se season, including a summer festival at the amusement park, Halloween at Hatter Mansion, Valentine's Day at Hart Castle, and a winter festival at the Tower of Clover. This series is also unique in that every role holder we've met up to this point exists at the same exact time. This includes those that are from Hart Castle, including the fairly new King of Hearts who we've only heard mention of before, Hatter Mansion, the Amusement Park, the Clock Tower, and the Tower Clover for a grand total of 14 role holders plus Joker. Joker himself describes April season as a brittle world built on lies and contradictions, and this is indeed true. Though the rules state only 12 role holders can be in a single country at once, April season breaks this rule. We also get to see one character take on a new role. These aren't the only rules that are bent and broken in the series, but I obviously don't want to spoil too much more. The series really has a lot of twists and turns that make it one of my favorite spin-offs. If you can only choose one Alice spin-off to read or collect, I would recommend this one in particular. April Season is an interesting concept and being able to interact with all the role holders makes it a nice, complete spin-off. Now we'll move on to the only other series in Joker done by my least favorite artist, the Nightmare Trilogy. There will be three volumes total, but because they have separate subtitled names, I can't tell if they'll be one complete story or three separate stories that feature Nightmare. At the end of this one, it does say Fiend, which implies that the story arc has ended. Again, I haven't looked too deeply into this to avoid spoilers for myself. The first volume is subtitled Dream Before Dawn, so let's get started. 
Alice is completely fed up and angry with people's fear of Nightmare. She knows him to be a gentle, mysterious, and incredibly sickly demon, and doesn't understand where their fear is coming from. Though Nightmare reassures her he's used to it, she's determined to change her perspective. Meanwhile, Nightmare wants to prove he isn't as weak and unreliable as the other role holders believe him to be. Will the Faceless and role holders be able to change their opinion of him? And will Alice be able to sort through her feelings? At the end of this one, even I don't know. Where do I even begin with this one? Shall we touch the artwork again? Cue the collective sighing of fangirls everywhere. This series, like the previous Nightmare Story from Clover, is drawn by the artist Job, and there really isn't much improvement, if any at all. The lines are still thick and sketchy, the backgrounds left blank, and deformed characters overused. Unfortunately, being a trilogy, we can dread this artwork for another two volumes. The story is quite a bit stronger than the previous Nightmare book. While I think it handles Nightmare's character a little better, the overall plot is so rushed in this volume, it's hard for me to justify it as a story, though. To me, it seems more like fluff and short stories like the last one, where the humor is almost always at Nightmare's expense. For example, the very first chapter, as there aren't any marked chapters, is a survival story that takes place on a random island in the amusement park that's never been discussed before. Despite a fair amount of build-up and explanation from Gowland, we never get a true ending of that story. Instead, it skips right to the circus, with the characters only mentioning briefly the outcome. And while we're on the subject of the circus, this series really doesn't explain April Season or Joker at all. This series, unlike most where you could pick them up and get through it okay, almost expects you to have read Circus and Liars game in order to avoid a deeper explanation of this confusing country. Honestly, if you like Nightmare, I can't exactly recommend this trilogy, but I would recommend it over the first story if only because there's a nicer balance between Nightmare's serious and childish sides. So now that you have summaries, what do you need to know about all of these series as a whole? Every book includes color pages at the beginning of them. These volumes also include a quick summary of what happened in the original series, as well as short bios of the characters that will appear in the story. Unlike Hearts and Clover, where you really just need to read the original to pick up any of them, this series is a little more complex. The series essentially takes place after Alice has visited both Hearts and Clover. It doesn't necessarily matter which of the Hearts or Clover spin-offs you read first, but I would recommend picking up at least one Clover series to better understand Nightmare and Grey Raymark's roles in Wonderland. If I had to recommend a one-volume story, it would be Bloody Twins. Not because of the male leads, but because of the fun facts page at the back of the book. It's an incredibly useful reference guide. Nightmare Trilogy is printed in the usual format, while Circus and Liars game is printed in the standard manga size, similar to My Fanatic Rabbit. Moving right along, the artwork for Joker is shoujo in style, with that one annoying exception I already went on about. Aminosuka Fujimaru is probably my favorite Alice artist. The lines are always clean and delicate, and all of the characters, including the males in my opinion, look quite pretty, as is expected in any shoujo manga. The Nightmare Trilogy, of course, is the only exception, where the artist, for some reason, uses thick, rough lines and overuses the deformed character technique. I want to repeat that this artist will be returning in January for Grey Ringmark's debut novel, Lizard's Aid, but Grey fans rejoice! Black Lizard and Bitter Taste, slated for a July 2015 release, has a different artist! Huzzah! Circus and Liars Game has a really adorable set of four panel comics at the end of almost every volume drawn by the artist where she imagines how the story would be different if Alice was tiny and acted like a small child. This is probably my favorite bonus material in the series as a whole just because it's so adorable and different. Nightmare Trilogy has a few short stories featuring Boris and Elliot at the end of it as well as a short preview for a different series. As always, if you're concerned about this and interested in buying one of the books, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'll give you page counts. I own every volume that's been released so far, from Hearts, Clover, Joker, and the newly released Diamond books, but we'll get into that in just a minute. So that wraps up the country of Joker. It's been a long journey through Wonderland, but the end is nearly in sight! Or is it? As I stated at the beginning, I do have both of the Country of Diamond books released last month, but I didn't realize there would be quite so much material for me to get through. I'm going to try my hardest to get through it in time for my December video, but I'm not going to make any promises. I wouldn't feel right doing a review based on skimming. But we're almost there, and if I don't make it by the December deadline, I will try to record an update video of sorts for you, as I have acquired some new series and collectibles. Again, if you have any questions about any of the volumes showcased here today, or about the series in general, leave a comment down below, and I'll try my best to answer it. 
I'll see you back here next month, hopefully on time, to explore two books that are quite different from what we've seen so far. I'll be seeing you next time in the country of Diamond. When I was given freedom, oh, all I did was flee. When I turned back, there was nothing to see. You closed your doors before I could open mine.